I realized this morning when I was thinking about this place and the journey of this place, when we bought this particular cottage, it was unlivable. And I think we have, the, and I was pregnant. And our house at home, <laughs> we bought an unlivable place when I was pregnant. So we take these giant projects and you can't, I mean, this was so disgusting when we first bought it. It was the location that we was great and the porch was huge and we sat right on the creek and you can hear the waterfall and that is fantastic. And then everything else we knew we could fix. So we moved the kitchen and the bedrooms and the stairs, um, the porch floor and ceiling are original, the front door original. The w windows are all in the same original locations, but it was, I mean, we were pulling down these old 70 ceiling tiles and it was just raining mouse poop. I mean, it was disgusting. There was a snake skin in the ceiling because the snakes were living in here. And Todd, we did it in nine months. He worked like 40 hour weekends. I would come and haul the trash and he was tired. And at one point <laughs> he was like, what, why didn't we just start over? Like we should have just torn the whole thing down and you know, started over, but it's all so historic. This, this has been here since 1906. Like how do you not leave some of that? You know, this is just, yeah, you can't do that here. I don't think you got to use what you have and just make it better. So we did, and it's just wonderful. It's small, so it's very tiny. So in the summer, it's great because the porch adds considerable square footage, but we have two baths, three bedrooms, two baths. And somehow, you know, luckily the kids only sleep here. There's no other things that they really do here very much other than sleep and eat. And they don't have stuff, you know. Jack's bedroom was a guest bedroom when I designed it, and then I had him and had to have a place for him. And now it's, it looks exactly the same. Thank goodness he's a boy and he doesn't care. <laughs> the day he cares, I will be so sad because it's such a cute bedroom. It's small, so we have to like be creative in how we store things. So we have antique buckets that hold the tennis rackets and some of Todd's tools. And we have, you know, cute containers that hold the sunscreen and the bug spray and the towels for the laundry because our laundry is hidden are in this really cute basket. We don't have a linen closet in the bathroom downstairs so another basket. <laughs> you know we have a drink bucket that holds our shoes just to try to make it cute even though we still have to live here. And then there's a paint painted pottery place on the grounds and kids paint so much pottery in the summer that even though you know we're in the design business, a lot of my decor is painted pottery that my children have made and rocks that they found in the creek and you know everything is a memory. This is where I hide a lot of the pottery because it comes in in such large quantities. I mean, they paint stacks of dishes, frogs, and this is just part of this. This is a partial season. And Jack, Maggie, and Ellie like this, but your dad and I, <laughs> We throw like uh, each season away and leave just a couple pieces so we have room for more. This is where the kitchen used to be. The back door is in the same location, but we had to basically rip down the side walls because this was an old porch. The porch wrapped three sides of this house and we moved the stairs. The stairs used to come up right here. There was a door and you walk straight up to the attic, which was unfinished. And there were these license plates on the stairs, which we saved and they now live underneath our stairs. So if anybody ever opens it up in 50 years, they're going to find the same license plates. And then the living room was straight through, went all the way to what's now Jack's bedroom. So straight through, the living room was just kind of the front of the house real skinny from here. Like it was very hard to put furniture in, went all the way to the wall. And so we moved the stairs to here and then put Jack's room behind it. When we moved the stairs, of course in tiny houses or small houses, you have to use every square inch of space. There was a spot under the stairs that is usable space, low, short, because the stairwell, stairway winds. But of course we needed a bar so we put an ice maker and a countertop and all of our supplies live there. 
And then the bathroom is just disgusting. <laughs> and the window you see is the same window that's in there now. It's the same shape and size, obviously a different window. And the upstairs was unfinished, but there were beds up here and it was gross. This window right here is in essentially the same spot. We just dormered it out so that we had a little more space in here. And the stairs came up kind of dissecting this window. This room, you can see the window, and actually Ellie's bed is in the same spot, sort of, as the before picture. And you could cousins come over, we just sleep all five of them in this room, and there's bodies everywhere, all over the floor, intertwined on each other. That's how much everybody loves this place. This corner, it had, there was a swing here, but the swing made it awkward. I mean, every porch around here has a swing, but the swing made it awkward for furniture placement. And this has become the happiest place on earth for me. <laughs> I sit in this chair, Dagny sits on this ugly brown blanket, which is why it's here. And I have my, either my antique vintage champagne coupe or my hot tea in this corner. And people just come and they fill the chairs and, you know, it's every weekend in the summer, it's a place to gather. All right, so this corner of the porch had a door right here to the bathroom. And the bathroom had these two doors like knocking on each other. So we didn't need a bathroom door on the porch. So we uh, closed that off. And then the bed that was here is actually the one that I painted, the headboard I painted silver and used it up in Ellie's room. We had these doors dipped, so they obviously look a lot better and more appropriate to the cottage. And the antlers that used to hang on the outside here, now we moved them and they hang on the inside um, at the bottom of the stairs. And the ant and these like horns that are on this side were here. So we took them down and put them right back up where they, where they lived for, who knows, 40, 50, 60 years. And the antlers, uh, in here are really cool. You should come in and shoot them because the antlers say Kaibab 1937 on them. So whoever shot this was in, and Kaibab is a national forest outside of the Grand Canyon in Arizona. And they shot it in 1937, which I think is so cool. And then those were the horns that were over there and we just put them back when we were done because they totally fit. Very few things still worked, um, and these were a few of them. This is a recent addition. It's a patio we share with our fantastic neighbor, Tom, who's in a previous video. <laughs> and we built this, and it's pretty cool because we intended for it to go deeper in the hill, but those giant rocks that come out are bluff stone. Things go back into the hillside substantially and so we kind of had to do it around the existing rock and it looks really cool anyway it's we love to barbecue when we're here so we have a gas grill and an egg and this is usually where you find the guys on the weekends call it cottage gothic slash cabiny I don't even know it is a mixture of Todd's and, and mostly Todd and my love of gothic architecture which you'll see inside with just the paneling and some of the details on there's a cross on the top of the stair um, mule post and then lodge you know you'll see in a video that we haven't shot yet I have this whole Yellowstone room at home where I love the outdoors and the national parks we have mounts you know and that's like the old British castle too right you got all these mounts on the wall so we have lots of animal mounts and skins and I don't know I love it it's cool